This is Jeff's unit, and I'm going to bring it in here and do a diagnosis on the forward and reverse controls. He's got an issue with slow reverse, so... Tozies, get out of the camera! This is a 1772 Cub Cadet, pretty sought after unit, 17 horsepower Kubota diesel. This is uh, a unit that was brought to me by a friend of mine uh, we met last year. He had never owned one before, a Cub at all, and he kind of fell in love with the Cub Cadets in general and has been buying and selling them ever since. He, he got bit. And this is his baby, this is a 1772. It's got the Cyclops rear end, so it's got the fine spine axles, custom drive shaft. Uh, he said it's the, uh, the Cyclops drive shaft, so we'll pop it open and take a look. And today it is in here for a uh, hydro control forward and reverse issue. Uh, it has a slow reverse, and uh, we're going to pop off the tunnel cover here and take a look and see what we've got. I haven't checked to see if the hour meter actually works, but I think we've got 670 hours, maybe? Yeah. Thing runs great, starts great. It's 20 degrees outside right now, and it fired right up. Um, so, yeah, we'll pull off that tunnel cover and take a look in there and see what we find. Jeff, this is for you, buddy. Here she is in the shop. All right, here we are on the 1772. Got the tunnel cover removed, and we're going to take a look at this linkage in here. So, what we've got in here are two pivoting plates, and then, and you can see them in uh, run parallel to each other there. And you've got those springs back there that are actually controlling the swash plate on the hydro. So this. That arm back there is actually connected to the hydro's swash plate. And so it moves one way or the other to change the direction of fluid. And in the middle should be about center and no fluid is moving around, which means no movement. The problem that we have with this one is that it's extremely sloppy. And you, did you see how much it moved to the side? And since this is a diesel, there's a lot of vibration going on, and so this one's actually a really good example of how bad they get. So the three areas to check, you have a pivot point here where there's this uh, control plate, and then you've got another pivot point for this control plate, and that should be pretty much centered with those springs and buttons. And it is not at all. And that's why the control is so inconsistent with this, because it kind of depends on if the tractor is leaning to the side or how much it's vibrating or what it's doing. So what's happening is that the wear points here, you can see how much slop there is in that. I know those are the two points to check. There's a pivot point down here for this one. That one is extremely sloppy. I mean, it, it can it's sitting like 15 degrees off. So those are the that's two of three. The third is the actual slot in the control mechanism here wears out, and you'll get a bunch of wear at the ends, and these these uh, springs won't slide properly in there. This one is not bad. I don't see. I don't see uh, too much grooving in there, but there's a lot of play in these pivots here. Another point to check are these little turnbuckles 
and there's a little bit of slop in these they're not bad but I think while we're in here we'll probably replace them get some tension on it see if I can get it to Hold it independently. It was not too bad. And then there's another one. That's where it connects to the rest of the control assembly there. So those can get sloppy too. These aren't too bad. So sometimes if this plate back here if this plate back here is not too worn you can shim it and this one here same deal you can put some fine machine washers in there to help pull it tight against that snap ring so it doesn't have a chance to wobble side to side and that one's so bad that we might have to replace that plate. So, but in order to get clear access to any of this, we got to pull the fender pan off. So, we'll come back, we'll pull the fender pan off, and we'll get a, an even better look at this whole assembly. All right, here is the 1772 with the fender pan taken off. So the seat, fender pan, tunnel cover, and then the fuel tank bracket. And then I just slid the fuel tank up, moved the lines up out of the way here, came up out of the uh, little tab here that holds the wiring and the fuel lines in place just to get enough room to get right in here. So this is a better look at the problem that we're having. You can see down in there, it's just, totally worn out where it's pivoting on the control for the hydro this one as well also just super sloppy so <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this plate and this plate and these springs now this slot here can sometimes get worn too but this one looks pretty good so no appreciable wear there. What you'll see typically is that there's a like a groove worn into the material here, but this one doesn't have the groove at all. So it's getting new, uh, new springs and uh, little buttons there. Two new plates, and then I've got a box of hydro control shims and snap rings. Now the three eight stuff we probably won't use, but the um, we do have primarily the 500 clips or the 500 shims, so half inch shims in here in two different thicknesses. So there's uh, five thousandths and ten thousandths shims there that are 500 ID, and then with a 5 8 ID, a 625 ID, we have the same. We have a pair of shims at five thousandths and ten thousandths. And we've got some new snap rings we're going to put on here too, just to make sure everything stays on there real nice and tight. So whatever slop is left over after we replace this plate, because inevitably there's somewhere in the mating part too, not as much probably, but there's some. Uh, whatever slop remains, we'll take up as much of that slop as we can by putting a shim between the pivot points. You can see how much movement there is there in that one. Uh, so we'll put a shim in between the retaining ring and the plate so that it can't rock back and forth so bad. Same down here with that guy. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but we'll, we'll get it. First thing I'm going to do, remove the control rod here. Move it like, looks like a half inch. Half inch. Yeah, we're going to have... I'm going to hold that, probably 7 sixteenths on the other side. There we go. 
And then uh, once we get all this stuff back together, we'll adjust for neutral before we put everything back together. Because everything's going to change. Once this stuff gets tightened up, the lever will be... Well, we might get lucky and the lever might be in the right spot, but it's highly unlikely uh, at this age that it's just going to magically be in neutral when we replace this stuff. So. Come on. Way. We can go that way. I think. Let's shove it over there. I don't want that fuel tank to fall off. I'm trying to be very careful with the fuel tank grommets and stuff because I don't want them to develop leaks. This, these lines really should be replaced on this thing, but uh, this repair gets pretty spendy once you price out these two plates because it's like two hundred dollars worth of plates basically here um, but it's good to grab them now this is 2023 who knows how long these plates will continue to be available so uh, yeah uh, now I believe we can remove I think remove both of these snap rings here A good pair of snap ring pliers is a must for this. If you got a janky pair, you're going to be real mad. Because there's not a lot of room to work here at all. Oh, yeah, that one I can get up top with here. Let's try that. Alright, come on. Come on. That's a pretty strong snap ring. I think I need the next size pliers up from these actually, but I'm just gonna be real careful with them. So there's one there. Yeah, that's a pretty beefy snap ring. Look at that thing, look how wide the base of it is. We got washer there. So now that's separated. Now the next one is gonna have to be down here. I don't know if I can get that snap ring to move in its groove. There it goes. Figure out what angle of attack I can get down here to get that thing off. Let's rotate it up a little bit. Okay. That one. And this is why I replace them. I didn't put much force on it, it just kind of kind of went. So another shin over there. And now I can slide this plate, I think, up here and up there. So there's that guy. Make sure he looks like the guy we just got. So there's definitely going to be some wear in the mating bracket here. We're going to have to take up some of that slop somehow. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I think so. It's a different hole right here. All right, and now for this guy. So the snap ring on this one, probably easiest to get to from, well, I don't know, it's kind of hard to say. We'll try getting to it from that side. Hmm, maybe not, maybe it's easier to get to from the other side. Come in, well, it's going to be kind of a pain coming in from there. It's kind of a pain no matter what. That's part of it. Oh man, it almost came off. Yeah, what's fighting me here? Looks like this 
clip right there is biting me, so let's, let's just move it out of the way. No reason to fight it for a 30 second clip right there. See if that helps at all. Yeah, that helps. Still tight though. I just don't have the right angle right there to get to that. Oh, 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 come on. Yeah, we got it. Whew. There's your other snap ring. And then this guy will slide off of here. These guys will come out. Slide out. So there's the old bracket. You can see how funny the wear has been on it right here. You can see how cockroach has been sitting in there. And here's our new one. Looks about right. Let's just go get a a caliper real quick and measure the bore on those and see how worn it actually is. Yeah, we're getting about six, almost dead on 625. That's almost dead on a, a 5 8 hole there. Six twenty-five. there's where the wear is, 640. On that side, this side here, about 625, 635, 10, yeah, it's worn 10, 20 thousandths probably overall. Yeah. But that little bit of slop, since it's only, you know, grabbing a tiny little bit of material here is definitely going to make it, make it tilt and move and do all kinds of crazy stuff. And if that thing doesn't, if the action between this and your lever, any slop in the action between here and up here, yeah, any slop between the controls there will make it do all kinds of funny stuff. So it will, sometimes the ground speed will change and you don't even change anything on the lever because the slop and the mechanism is going one way or another. Sometimes you're going up a hill and the slop goes back and then it, it loses speed sometimes you're going down a hill and the slop is pushed by gravity down and it, it you know makes you go faster um, not having a consistent uh, placement for where neutral is on the lever is a thing you know losing some of the reverse is a thing any any kind of the any kind of slop in this mechanism can just make the whole system act really funky so let's put this guy back on here. Let's see how he fits just normally. Oh wow, that's gonna be a tight fit. Like a real tight fit. 